All right, the next guest is a special one um, because this is not a normal group, right? Uh, can you can you introduce yourself? We are considered quite unique. Um, my name is Becca. I'm part of British Scouting Overseas, which is a part of the UK Scout Association. So we do the same badges, same program, same leader training, um, but we are all based in countries all around the world. So I have lived in Stockholm for the last eight years, um, and I'm the group scout leader of my group there. So we have the four um, different age groups of scouts. Um, and the different sections um, and the purpose of it um, I will use my group as a specific example but the purpose of British Scouting overseas is to enable kind of international hubs of people um, so for instance we are based at an international school where it's not only British students but kids from all around the world and they don't necessarily speak the local language so in my case Swedish well enough to join Swedish Scouting but they still should have access to um, this kind of activity so we have these international groups um, and we are part of British Scouting but I have I think I counted 16 nationalities of children just in my scouts alone not in all the age groups um, and so yeah that's why we exist 16 different countries and what what which kind of countries except for Sweden and England uh, so we're based all around the world we actually have four districts so most of the people here are from northern europe is our uh, kind of biggest or most active district um, we also have southern europe we have uh, middle east we also have a lot of groups in the middle east so around kuwait dubai um, uae um, oman we have a lot, of, a lot of groups out this way and then our fourth district um, we have a few groups in like singapore um, we have groups in the Ascension Islands, Falkland, um, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, so there are yeah, quite a few different spread out ones. Um, and this fourth district is known as rest of the world because it's not so easy to <laughs> group them all together into anything else. The rest of the world. The rest of the world was a district, yes. And that's a big group. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you uh, uh, organize it? Because it's, I, think it's, uh, I think it's hard to organize every department, every chapter to get it into one group. How does it work in the preparation? It's, um, uh, do you mean as in coming to camps? Yeah, to coming to the Island Gymnasium. So uh, generally speaking, our structure is the same as in like the UK. F uh, for instance, you have our districts within them, the smaller groups. Each group camps locally, their own events and things. We're the only group in Sweden, so we often do stuff, obviously, just ourselves. And then every year we have one big summer camp we organize. Um, so Harlem has actually been slightly different this year because what we normally do is we figure out how many space we have. We um, open up the sign-up and then anyone from BSO anywhere in the world will register that they want to come um, and it's, you know, allocated spaces on there. Harlem's been a little bit different this year because we have the group in The Hague. They obviously have just signed up and come separately because it makes sense. Um, the Brussels group we have uh, camped opposite us in red. They have also just come as a single unit um, and also the uh, first Bougival from France have um, come as a, as a separate unit as well. So on this camp we actually have four different um, groups of us but normally we would be one central um, yeah, central group uh, and it does make it really interesting because you know I meet kids last year we had our camp, our camp was in uh, Kent at the International Jamboree there mm -hmm. but very often you will have both leaders and young people who have never met each other before or maybe only know one or two people from their group who have also come um, but it's really nice because they're all based in like these international hubs they're so used to meeting new people and of all different cultures um, and they just pick it up a couple of them are feeling the first day you know there's not so many people here their age or they go by day three they're all you know close knit in like this um, like they knew each other always so it's always the same with the scouts the first day shy in their tents telephones mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and then the third the third day friends everywhere from the whole sub camp other sub camps yes they're yeah. enjoying themselves they're loving it yeah what is the the, the the thing that they can't stop talking about right now um i think uh, I mean, obviously, they enjoy the physical activities as well. I think a lot of them really enjoyed the day out we had um, because they, they do. Again, I think they appreciate the sort of cultural things. So uh, two of our groups went and did like the Anne Frank house. And this was uh, obviously quite a big thing to um, experience. I think they really enjoyed this. Um, I don't know. I haven't been uh, fortunate enough to go to many of the activities with them. So I've been working hard in the kitchen and the 
with the leaders. Uh, get, the, uh, get, the meal, uh, get, get the meal ready for the uh, for the evening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is your first time at uh, Jamaret. This is my first time here. Um, a lot of the other leaders have been before. So Nathan Prince is our area commissioner. He's um, kind of captain of our camp this time, chief. Um, he's been here a, a few times before. BSO has been probably for quite a few events running at Harlem. Yeah. I don't know how many, yeah. <laughs> so I, I can't give a number. I know the Hague group comes every time because it is local. They've been here often. But again, even with the groups, so BSO has come every time. The leaders will have been different uh, a lot of those times as well. Yeah, it regulates, uh, so people quit and, then, and the next ge young generations take it over. So we do have, I think, two of our leaders on the camp this time were uh, young people last time. So they were here as participants. And now they've become um, network is what we call the 18 to 25 year old scouts um, in the UK. So um, the the other thing about BSO is that we all have multiple roles because we're often short from people. So I'm actually the network commissioner for, for British Scouting overseas. So they've uh, obviously become active network members and then heard through other people that this camp is happening and have signed up as leaders because they were here as young people and enjoyed it. So yeah, they've uh, started coming back around in the in the cycle now. <laughs> Do you, um, are there any cultural differences, uh, of course, cultural difference within the children, within the group? Yeah, huge ones. And how do you how do you manage that? But as I say, they are from all places of the world, but most of them don't live in the countries, either of their kind of nationality, um, you know, they their family may be from one place, but have moved to another and another and another. So they're all culturally quite different in terms of origin, but they have all been used to living in this, I don't really know how to describe it, like international setting that they're all just... You know, it doesn't matter to any of them. The, we have quite a few in like dietary that are, you know, things halal or um, other different um, dietary requirements. And so we have all like four or five different cooking sets on the go at once. Um, but in terms of social aspect, there's, they don't they don't even really consider it a difference, which is a really nice. It's really nice. That's also the, the, the point of scouting, right? Yeah. Everybody's the same wearing a scarf. And whilst the intention can be there, you know, if you have a group from one part of the world who are all the same race and all the same religion and all the same everything, you can be accepting of other people, but you're still uh, kind of raised and living in this one culture environment. So with them, they are from all over and they're the same as other scouts and in terms of acceptance, but you just don't see the same, uh, yeah, there's no specific environment that you could call us because we're not, we are British scouts, but we can't even claim to be British really, you know, because it's we do everything so differently from and the British scouts. A lot of the flags of the opening ceremony yes, a is lot because of, of your group. <laughs> uh, most of them, yeah, I think was from, from our group. We were trying to have... Um, with the pen and paper, we were given a list and trying to find kids from these places to get them to sign up to go carry them. That was quite funny. You have also people from Sri Lanka with you, right? Um, we don't have any groups there, but um, some of them maybe yeah, nationality from there. I don't, I don't know all of them actually. I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you ten different ones. I think. I heard from Petra, the soccer leader of Red, that this morning that you have Sri Lanka uh, uh, scouts. That's why I know. Uh, uh, that's why I know it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I saw that flag in the opening ceremony. I think, Scott from Sri Lanka here? Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, he, they, he will be, um, his family will be Sri Lankan and they will be living in um, another part of the world. And that's why it's so hard to track because, you know, there's some people, I think when you hear like some of the British leaders maybe speaking, you assume they're from the UK, but then find out that we're actually living in, you know, Prague or Stockholm or uh, wherever else. Um, and with the kids, like we don't, when I say you're not aware of it, they don't consider it a difference. I don't even know what groups half of them are from. When you're talking to them, of course, we all have it on paper and it's noted and we, you know, we have the paper trail. But when you're speaking to them, I can't remember where they're from and it doesn't matter. It's, you know, the only time it's uh, really come up in conversation, I think things like at Kent last year, I uh, was trying to tell a, uh, a scout that he, it was a really hot day and he's wearing a you know, huge jumper. And I said to him a few times, you need to take it off. It's too warm to be wearing this. And 
I see him a few minutes later and he's still wearing it and I'm getting annoyed, you know, he's ignoring me, he's going to make himself unwell. It, yeah. um, and then just before I started to really like tell him off, to take it off, um, I kind of went, oh, no, wait, hang on. Um, and I said to him, where do you live? And he said, oh, I live in Kuwait. And so for him, even the hottest day in the UK was, you know, quite, quite cold compared to where he lives at. So this is the only time you really actually have to think like where maybe they're from ah, in the world. That's why. That's why you're wearing it. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, you know, like I said, when we say we don't think about it, that's the kind of thing. It, it doesn't matter where everyone's from. Like I couldn't tell you most of the kids by, by face where they're from. Like I say, we could look it up, but it doesn't matter to us whilst they're here. So I really like that, that movie strip that you made. Yes. Before, uh, before uh, 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 when you walk past your tent, there's a walk, yeah, a strip of... Uh, movie pictures mm -hmm. and with all the children next to each other with their nationality under it and then end of the line of end of the movie uh, uh, why did you did that to introduce the, the nationalities so um i think probably by now everyone in this campsite has heard of um, british scouting overseas we're quite loud we have lots of signs we have uh, wooden pegs with <laughs> british scouting overseas stamped on and um, which the kids love to peg around um and the, again the purpose of it we've I mean, we've existed a long time, but we've not been very well known of. Um, and even within recent years, it's only just become with the, you know, the Scout Association, which we are a part of. It's obviously still very focused on the UK because that's where the majority of the, you know, we're like a tiny blip yeah. compared to the number of people in the UK. So when they have um, forms or surveys or even when I'm trying to, you know, process admin for leaders and things, very often BSO would not be an option on the drop down. Or the districts, maybe you could pick BSO, but then out from our districts, it would be every other district in the UK and we wouldn't be on it. Um, and so our area commissioner, Nathan, has been uh, fighting very hard to change that. And part of that is when we go to big camps, you know, our name is everywhere. So we have quite a few other signs as well. Those ones stay. And then for each individual camp, we have one made up to fit the theme. Um, so last year at Kent, the theme was, I think it was space something to do with space and so all our banner was same same the exact thing with every person who's come to the camp but we were in little like spaceships floating through through yeah, space with, in the this picture, one, with, the the, with the pictures yeah nice. um and so we have them all up there so everyone sees us everyone hears of us um, and at the end of camp actually what we do every year is we cut so if you notice they have all their nationalities but they've been grouped by the place they come from So actually, maybe I should have said if it's on the banner, we can we can see that if we want to know where they're from. Um, but we cut it. So there's I have uh, three explorers and one scout here from my group in Stockholm. Um, and so what happens is at the end of camp, it will be cut into sections. And I'll roll up the one with my face and my kids' faces on. And we take that back to Sweden with us and keep it in our scout group, uh, you know, like a memory for each camp. That we've like done. an archive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've been there in that year. You've been in that year. Uh, you also been to the Kent Jamboree, or so I was at the um, Kent International Jamboree last year. I think there was a gap in the COVID years. Um, my uh, other big camps before that, I did uh, World Scout Jamboree in 2019, and I did Chamboree in the UK in 2018. But that was the first big one I have ever um, been to. So I had a couple, and then a gap, and then yeah, this year and last year. Can you feel? Uh, uh, do you feel any difference between this camp? Because this is local organized. This is not by uh, the Dutch Scouts, uh, the Dutch Scout movement. Mm -hmm. So really, from this area, do you know? Uh, uh, do you feel any difference between the Hanum Jamboree and the Kent Jamboree and the World Jamboree? Of course, the size, but uh, in feeling, or is it just the same? I think in feeling, it's the same. Obviously, the activities vary, but within a camp, there's a lot of similar, similar things. Obviously, when you have like the day out trips and things, these are based on location, so they're very different. The one thing I would say is that obviously in the UK, um, even if it's an international jamboree, it's majority um, British scouts still. So it's quite hard to actually find people from other groups, from other parts of the world when you're there. Um, it's not it's not a good thing or a bad thing, um, but here I think it is, you know, not, not even including us, it's much more international. Um, and if it were the same as the the british camps then i would expect there to be way more dutch groups here whereas actually we've got you know canadian and finnish and tunisian with us in in this camp so in that respect i think it's very different um in terms of who is attending um 
This is one has been a lot muddier than <laughs> than muddier, Ken. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is this is the muddiest rain. edition <laughs> I can remember. And I've come here from 2003 already. Uh huh. And 2007 was also wet, but this is far out the wettest until now. So I brought the bad weather with me. Yeah, <laughs> the English weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but but we had such massive rain uh, rain showers these days mm. for the first day, and uh, no no terrain can handle that uh, amount of uh, water. And I think it's pretty dried up pretty quickly, uh, to it's be honest. Been, yeah, no, I'm um, I'm happy. I'm in red subcamp. I think the green one is much uh, much muddier. Yeah, the green <laughs> one is muddy, and the yellow one is muddier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some parts here uh, in the in the orange subcamp. But but it's not too bad. I uh, have chosen for flip flops because they are easier to clean and keep dry than <laughs> than actual shoes. So I don't think I've put on a pair of real shoes since I started camp. Oh, you can wear wooden uh, wooden shoes like wooden clocks. It's uh, of yeah. the red camp. They're quite. Are they heavy though? Well, they're not heavy, but you need to have special socks for in it. Otherwise, it's not comfortable. Oh, but see, this is why I wanted flip flops. I have worn no socks. All of my socks and shoes are clean and dry. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> my feet sometimes maybe not, but yeah, wash them on the way back to camp and they're fine. <laughs>